Over one billion people across the world rely on fish as their main source of protein, mostly in developing countries. Due to overfishing, approximately 70% of the world's fish are either fully exploited or depleted. As a result, fish farming or aquaculture is meeting the demands of fish consumption. Sustainable and environmentally friendly, fish farming is taking place right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. What may surprise you is where one of the sustainable fish farms is located, at Ivana Yudorkin High School. Welcome to One on One, where my guests today are Dr. Sharon McCullum, Principal of Ivana Yudorkin, Mr. Kirk Lewis, who teaches and oversees the Aquaculture Project, Mr. Lux James, who transports the tilapia seedlings to and from St. Croix and St. Thomas, and Mr. Paco Rivera from Celtic Therapeutics, who is responsible for underwriting this tilapia project. To give you a better idea how aquaponic works, we put this illustration on the screen consisting of four steps. After the tilapia seedlings are collected and placed into the fish tank and start to mature, this water mixed with fish waste fills a flood tank. When the tank empties, nutrient-rich waters flows into the gravel filled beds, feeding the plants or vegetables that grow there. Those same plants help clean the water. This aerated clean water then returns to the fish tank where the cycle repeats itself. Mr. James, you've had uh, a passion for this, so explain to me and share with the viewing audience, how did you get yourself all caught up in this tilapia business? Uh, in 1993, while as a senator, uh, aquaponics were being developed in St. Croix, and we saw that that would be the new trend, as I mentioned earlier. And with the pollution that we have in our oceans today from the earthquake in Japan, all that toxic and the coral reefs are dying and everything, we're going to have to start producing our own fish okay. in marine uh, aquaponics mm -hmm. next to the, to the water as well as, as we have it at Eudora Ken. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I saw a need for it, and that's, that's the trend. That's where we're going to be headed at and we're gonna be actually developing our own fish. And I think it will be very important because we're gonna eat positive and eat well. Eat well and yes. staying healthy. That's one of the things that I love about this project. As, an, as a teacher, I'm looking at it from so many different standpoints. It is in, in conjunction of staying green, promoting yes. healthy living, but most importantly, teaching our children early the importance of farming. Okay, that is something that's often lo lost throughout the curriculum. You fail to address that, but here's an excellent opportunity to have an interdisciplinary approach to education. You're talking about entrepreneurship. You're talking about using your math skills, mm -hmm. your communication skills, marketing skills, all wrapped up into this project. How did, has the community um, taken to this project? I think community is going to take it very well. Uh, okay. As a matter of fact, the students will have a, a, a way to develop ideas and other means as you mentioned, marketing, it's only product, the production of the fish, cleaning, mm -hmm. uh, selling the fish, as well as the uh, produce that will come as an offset from that. And I think it's going to be very good. Uh, in addition to that, I'd like to actually see this on a larger scale right. because Eudora Ken is a pilot program. Right. That is what is really introducing this aspect of it to the community because we're going to have this on a much larger scale mm -hmm. as we move on in the future. So I, I really would like to commend uh, Dr. McCollum and her idea, as well as uh, those individuals who actually assisted her in making this become a reality. I know that we had uh, some community members that really were very fortunate to donate to this project. Yes. And who were they, if you might want to share with us? Uh, I can remember a few, may okay. not remember all, but certainly um, at the top of my head, Celtic pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. They um, came along and um, really stepped forward in providing us with the funds to get the project off the ground and to get it where it is today. Um, certainly Home Depot, they came forward to help us with um, the materials that mm -hmm. we needed. Um, several individuals, including Dr. Los James, you know, for giving us the aid of shipping the fish is over Seedlings, and that right. you know it, it is great because it cut down on our cost for, of shipment mm -hmm. um lois hughes another fine individual that came along and provide the plumbing for us um i can't go along without mentioning um a gentleman by the name of mr seraphin mm -hmm. who constructed uh, the um structure that is there the school mm -hmm. um and he did an excellent job 
uh, and a, a whole lot more. Certainly, um, Ms. McCollum for taking me up on the idea <laughs> and um, <laughs> seeing the wisdom behind of it that, you know, it's something that can be started here at the school, at the Dorican, and expand it beyond the school, because that is our intention to expand it. Um, certainly a whole lot of um, people from the community have come out to the school and have inquired about it. Mm -hmm. um, several of the other schools have come by to ask, well, um, how they can get involved. And certainly it's a project I certainly like to see in many of the schools within the Virgin Islands, if not all. Um, it could be community projects yeah. um, within the different communities. Um, Mr. James mentioned something, seeing that um, we are in an economic crisis and um, tourism is our main source of revenue, but I think we do need to diversify. And certainly this is one way in which we can diverse, begin to diversify our economy. Um, I always believe that um, we should start looking from within and produce from within, not just for ourselves, but for the rest of the world. Right. Now, Mr. James, what about in St. Croix? Is this a project that the school system is going to embrace also in the area of St. Croix? I would certainly like to see it throughout the Virgin Islands. Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, I know Mr. Donald Bailey at the University of Virgin Islands, who is the one that actually packed the fish for me because I had a time limit to get the fish from St. Croix to Eudora Can. And, and what he, is that? What is that? Well, he packed them in a box with uh -huh. a plastic bag. Uh -huh. We had about 16 fishes in, in, in uh, each container. Okay. And then he oxygenate the, the bag and blew it up like a balloon and put a rubber band around it and closed the bag and seal it up, the box rather, and seal it up mm -hmm. and said, okay, you have at least an hour to get these fish over to Mr. Lewis <laughs> so we can put them in the, in the, in the tanks and right. we'll be good to go. The oxygenating of the fish actually placed the fish somewhat uh, docile. It, it, it just, uh, like you go under anesthesia. Okay. It, put them to sleep. So when we got them to Mr. Lewis, it was much easier to yes. transfer Did them transfer. and get them awakened and, and back in, in, in how they should be. Okay, we'll be back. Hi, I'm Sarah Burke, TV host for One on One. And this was me before, and this is me now. I'm inviting you to take the Body by VI 90 Day Challenge. Shake it, shake it. Chances are right now you want to lose some weight, build more muscle, and get in better shape. Or maybe you just want to live a healthier lifestyle. We're here to challenge you, to challenge the way you think about slimming down and shaping up by introducing you to the Body by VI 90 Day Challenge. Get in shape, lose weight, and take the challenge. Log on to this is a great shake .com. Shake it, shake it. Just replace one or two meals a day with a shake and a little exercise, and that's it. I've lost 20 pounds, and my goal is to lose 20 more. To find out more, go to this is a great shake .com. Start losing weight the easy way. The core of the Body by Vi 90 Day Challenge is the Vi Shape Nutritional Shake Mix. To match the same nutritional values found in one shake, you would need to eat over a dozen eggs, 
one and a half cups of broccoli, five peaches, at least two chicken breasts, a cup and a half of frozen yogurt, one and a half cups of bran flakes, 18 ounces of tomato juice, five ounces of cheddar cheese, three cups of cooked lima beans, 15 slices of whole wheat bread, 20 spears of asparagus, two cups of sliced mushrooms, 30 whole apples, 10 stalks of celery, at least three tomatoes, three pineapples, and 30 prunes. That would be 8,662 calories and cost over $100. Or you could get all of that nutrition in one convenient, delicious shake for less than $2. Make a decision that makes sense today. Start losing weight today. Log on to thisisagreatshake.com. Well, we're back and I'm so excited because with us on this segment is Dr. McCollum from Ivana Yudorkin High School and also joining us to talk about this tilapia farm project is Mr. Paco Rivera from Celtic Therapeutics and welcome again. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Rivera, let's talk, you're one of our community stakeholders and I wanted to take the time out to say thank you so much thank for you. investing in our children, for believing in our community <coughs> and giving back. Um, Celtic. You. Therapeutics. What do they do? What is that agency? Well, we are we are uh, one of the EDC company located here in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. We are a global equity firm um, that we get involved in acquisitions and investments in therapeutic products development. Mm -hmm. Meaning that uh, we um, go around the world and see any any drug that is in testing that okay. we feel that uh, has the potential to be to become uh, a blockbuster. Right? We try to acquire uh, the rights for that uh, product and then continue the testing that might take you know, a couple of years until it's approved by the federal government. All right. So how did you get yourself involved in tilapia farming, that project? How did that come about? Well, it's a, it's a long story, but I'm going to make it very short. Um, we, dis we, uh, we have, to, we have 100, over $130,000 mm -hmm. to donate uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And who, who is the best entity that our neighbor, you know, Eudora King High School. Right. And one day we went to uh, see Dr. McCollum uh, and we uh, say we are from Celtic. My name is Paco Rivera and uh, we want to help assist uh, the school in any area uh, related to science, math and health. Right. Oh, right. And then she said, well, you know, we have some blueprints to, to do a, a lab um, building, you know, science uh, building. And maybe, you know, you can help her with that one. But during the conversation, uh, we continue talking about any other project. And we said, uh, tell us or send us a, a document with any projects that you have in mind that we can help. Uh, a couple of days later, uh, Dr. McCollum sent us a list of three pages and mm -hmm. we start to look at them <laughs> <laughs> and see, you know, which one really we can help and, and make uh, the biggest impact, you know, to the students, to the community. And we went back and we talked about, about, again about the science lab and building. But during the conversation, she said, OK, come, come, guys, let, let's see something that I interested to, to do for years and see what you guys think about it. And then, you know, she said, well, this is, she show, show us a couple of tanks and said, well, we, we're thinking uh, to build a tilapia farm. Hmm. Uh, if you can uh, provide us for some funds, uh, if you decide, you know, go that way. Uh, we, I would like to start up this, this project that I had in mind for so many years. So, Definitely, we agree, right? At that time, we agree with only $20,000, $20, but the project continued growing, uh -huh. expanded, uh, doing a much better building, right? And to the point that uh, at the end, we uh, invest $75,000 in that project. Wow. And we are very proud, I mean, uh, to help not the students, because um, the curriculum is, um, is improved tremendously in terms of science, um, biology, um, culinary um, arts, mm -hmm. culinary arts. So, 
and, and then so many students that were, were, is going to get involved, plus the opportunity to give other schools to come and visit and learn and participate. Plus, uh, the big impact is the community too, because that's another source of you know, um, food, mm -hmm. right? That the community will have that we don't have to import. So for us, at the end, is you know, be, we saw it as, as a huge, and it is a huge project in terms of the impact uh, for the, um, you know, for the fish and farm. Well, we can't thank you enough. It takes community stakeholders such as yourselves and their um, <coughs> Celtic therapists to really invest and give back to our children, and we thank you so much for thank doing you. that. Dr. McCollum, always an innovative thinker out the box. This tilapia idea, this tilapia farm idea, you embraced it. Why? The teacher, um, Kurt Lewis, is the first person that brought the idea to us. Mm -hmm. um, he had gone to St. Croix, gotten the training from the University of the Virgin Islands. And uh, I might add that for two years after we had purchased the equipment, it sat in the warehouse. And I realized that one, we needed to get it out of the warehouse. Two, we are always looking for ways to keep our students engaged. Not every child is going to be engaged with just books. They right. need hands-on things. And oddly enough, I think this has come in a very timely manner with Hess Oil closing and the need for us to expand and develop our economy and the workforce. Um, so it was just a matter of one, being introduced to it by the teacher, and then secondly, seeing the need that it could engage our students and keep some that perhaps would not find the traditional approach in education the way they want to go. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for ways to keep our students involved in school, um, such as our marine program. We have the only sailing program mm -hmm. in schools. We have small engines. This is just another step in broadening the outreach to students to make them productive citizens. I was really taken back when I went and I noticed that in every station I can see the availability of cre uh, introducing more career readiness skills to the students. There's a carving station where after you take your fish you cut it up and you clean it up. You have the other section that deals with the agriculture component where all that water is filtered and then you start growing plants. And then I can just visualize, and I know this is what you did because you're a visionary thinker anyway, from the farm to the lunchroom table. Mm -hmm. that whole process that it takes. And it takes people like you both to be able to say, this is something that's worthy to invest in and our children need this, it prepares them. We've been working on our state priorities in terms of career readiness. What better opportunity than this tilapia farm? One of the things that the farm is also going to feed into, um, Eudora Ken has just been adopted for the Finance Academy. And um, we're looking at the science aspect of it in terms of the tilapia farm and, and the whole development and growth of the f uh, fish and the water and the hydroponic garden. But it has to be managed. Mm -hmm. You have to have bookkeepers. We have to um, market it to the community. So we are now carrying it across the curriculum, not just in the science department, but in the business department as well with the Finance Academy. Then there's the other end of it with culinary arts in the vocational uh, segment of the campus. The students will learn how to harvest the fish, mm -hmm. how to fillet them, how to prepare them. Um, so it, it, it's expanding throughout the <coughs> curriculum. We also are inviting, I have spoken to numerous um, elementary principals and Mr. Farrell Middle School, of course, our feeder school, but next year, we want to have the schools come and visit. And um, mm -hmm. As you know, we just finished a meeting about dropouts. Right. And one of the things that I firmly believe is we have to plant in children early the idea that you're going to high school and you're going to finish high school. And what better way than having the little ones come and see the fish on mm -hmm. campus and you know, just developing the idea, I'm going to Eudora Ken, I'm going to high That's school, right. I'm going to work in the tilapia farm. And we're doing the same thing with the Dynamite Rays Marching Band. We go to the elementary schools, we perform. We go to St. John, we perform. We want to engage our children. We want our children to be successful learners. We want them to graduate and to move on. Right. And this particular project serves as a project-based learning experience, moving away from that chalk and talk traditional setting, Absolutely. outside to hands-on. This is what it is. We're farming. We're doing it all live here at Eudorican. So please stay tuned and don't change that dial.
There are some that will tell you there is no real evidence of gang problems in the U.S. Virgin Islands. There are some that want you to think that the violence we read about each day is isolated to a handful of teenagers and younger adults interested only in shooting and killing each other. To those people, we would like to say thank you. You are the reason we formed an organization called the Virgin Islands Anti-Gang Committee, focused on gang prevention and a safer community through targeted outreach, training, and education. Hi, I'm Sarah Burke, TV host for One on One, and this was me before, and this is me now. I'm inviting you to take the Body by BI 90 Day Challenge. Shake it, shake it. Chances are right now, you want to lose some weight, build more muscle, and get in better shape. Or maybe you just want to live a healthier lifestyle. We're here to challenge you, to challenge the way you think about slimming down and shaping up by introducing you to the Body by VI 90 Day Challenge. Get in shape, lose weight, and take the challenge. Log on to thisisagreatshake.com. Just replace one or two meals a day with the shake and a little exercise, and that's it. I've lost 20 pounds, and my goal is to lose 20 more. To find out more, go to thisisagreatshake.com. Start losing weight the easy way. We're back with Mr. Paco Rivera from Celtic Therapeutics and Dr. McCollum. Dr. McCollum, one of the issues that we have across the nation is starting a program and keeping the program going. Mm -hmm. Definitely the Tilapia Farm is one of those programs that we can see the sustainability factor being in there, but we want to go on ahead and get more people involved. If anyone wanted to come and donate, how do they go about it? Because this is a project that really warrants additional funding. Is this is just the first phase of it? This is phase one. Um, if anyone wants to donate, not only to the tilapia farm, but to the school as well, I encourage them to contact me. Okay. As uh, Mr. Rivera stated earlier, my needs list is quite long. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there are many things that we have at the school that probably would not happen if we don't have private donors, such right. as this project. So I encourage them to contact me, and we can uh, start the conversation. Okay. And then Celtic. How does Celtic going to continue to support this project? Are there any future plans in terms of just seeing the projects to its true uh, completion? How, De how do they definitely. Want it? We already assigned uh, some funds to extend uh, the roofing, the All roof right. of, of the fish farm, mm -hmm. right, to protect the, the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's something that we're going to do. We, uh, we have the funds and we're going to complete it very soon. Okay. Um, and additionally, we're going to um, assist the, the nurse unit of the school. You know, we're going to uh, renovate the nurse oh, unit. Awesome. And uh, we are also have the funds, and uh, as a matter of fact, I uh, volunteer my services um, to be the project manager, so to release Dr. McCollum from <laughs> her daily uh, duties. Plus, we have other projects uh, for this year. Uh, but everything is, is, is with, with our objective to help the students as m many as we can, right? Every project that we do is to help the community, to help the students as many as we can. Giving back is the key. Now, Dr. McCollum, we had made mention earlier in terms of expanding that the vision is hopefully that all the schools get involved but you Dorican students play a key component because they can use and implement the trainer trainer models. These are the children that know from its inception what it takes to start mm -hmm. this tilapia farm. And then maybe we can use them to showcase, to show the other students in the other schools on how to work with the farm. So it's, they themselves are being empowered. That's very true. And um, I might add that when we have the field trips coming, it's the students that are going to host those students. That's it. Also, I envision down the road that these children will be able to start their own tilapia farms. They will be able to promote the industry in the Virgin Islands. There's absolutely no reason why the vast amount of commercially produced seafood is coming from Asia. Mm -hmm. We now have that large property with Hess Oil. We have other areas here in St. Thomas, 
and we're training students, hopefully that we will be able to give some competition, serious competition to the world market as they grow and as they and they should be able to train others as they learn the process. Stretching our boundaries and making sure that the children are in the front line, that's the way it's done. Dr. McCollum, I thank you so much for being an innovator, thinker, and in just embracing different things and making your school such a different environment. I know that when we went on campus to film and take clippage of um, the farm itself, Every, the kids just kept coming back and forth looking and just wanted to talk about it. And it's like the buzzword on Ken right about now. So obviously something right is going on. Right. When you hear the kids wanting to be part of it, that says it's actually working. I would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank Celtic Therapeutics and to thank Paco. Um, and I feel free to say Paco because as we have grown and gone through this together, we've become very, very close friends, personal friends. And this would not have happened. And it certainly would not be a facility of the caliber that it is if it were not for Celtic Therapeutics and the other donors they gave as well. But the principal lead in this was Celtic Therapeutics. Yeah. And, and I do want to thank them. Yeah. Thank you. And like I said before, we haven't stopped you know, helping um, Eldora Keen. And uh, we have plans to help other entities uh, throughout the Virgin Islands. So mm -hmm. we are here to stay and continue contributing to, to the best of this island. Well, we thank you. And we thank you so very much for tuning in. And we're asking our community to invest in our children's future. We have this excellent Tilapia Farm project going on at Eudorican. It is a way for our community to broaden its entrepreneurship skills. It is a way for our children to learn more about business. It's also a way for us to really expand our economy. So invest in our children and please continue to tune in to One on One. United for Solutions, helping to produce television programming that informs and inspires the community to take action on social issues.